Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Natecast. We are here on Grezvan with a Terran versus Protoss. I've just been going through some pro replays, some of the some of the ones in my backlog I haven't been able to get through. I think these games are from the last five to seven days, maybe 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 a week ish. Anyway, we got in the top left, we have the red Protoss player. His name is Classic. Facing off against Nathanius' favorite Terran player in the bottom right, the blue Terran boy. He is Gumiho. I've been stealing a lot of Gumiho's builds on the ladder. I can't lie. Uh, I think in the KSL, I got to see him do that armory mind drop into a quick Thor and then expand. And weirdly enough, that build's actually been one of the best, the best builds that I've been executing on the ladder as of late. It's uh, it's kind of kind of disturbing almost how good how good that Thor expand after the mind drop is. So I believe these guys actually are playing in the Korean Star League. I think that's where these replays are from. So if you've uh, if you've seen this, maybe you know maybe you know what went down. Maybe you know what's going on. But otherwise, for the rest of us, we we always appreciate a good opportunity to see two of the best go at it. And frankly speaking, give us more opportunities to copy their strategies so that we can assimilate it into ours and become better at the game. Or better at whatever it is that we want to do within the game. For me, for me, it's really all about making as many battle cruisers as possible. So I need to learn. I need to learn how to expand without researching STEM. Which, uh, as some of you may be aware, is one of the most difficult things that you can do in StarCraft. But, you know, we don't uh we don't strive for greatness because it is easy, right? Because then, then everybody would be great, and then we'd all, you know what I mean? It's like, ah, uh, how would you be able to say you're better than other people if everybody accomplished everything they were trying to do, right? Kind of, kind of defeats the purpose. So, we need to make sure we have something to give ourselves anxiety attacks over every day, which means our game can get better. So let's see. Let's see what Gumiho is bringing to the table this time around. It is a Reaper expand. Nothing super crazy. The Cybernetics Core finished up for Classic, but he hasn't made a commitment to any tech yet. There's no pylon in the back of the main to hide something by. There is one by the ramp. And Gumiho's Reaper, I believe he did not see that pylon here because he kind of went up towards where the gateway is. So he may not necessarily be expecting this Stargate. Stargate openings out of an Adept first is pretty common though. So this is something that we're going to probably keep in mind. Gumiho should be thinking, all right, if it's an adept build and not a stalker build, especially if he sees that it's more than one adept, there's really only one place the gas can be going in those situations. And typically that is towards the Stargate. Other times when it's an adept opening, you might see like a proxy dark shrine or yeah, that's, that's usually about it. Um, you don't have resonating glaives really as a build anymore versus Terran since it doesn't it doesn't uh, two-shot SCVs and Marines like it used to in the old days. But if Gumiho realized what's happening, then he might just spread his Widow Mines out around his base. And I'd almost say get a fast armory. He's probably going to play Bio this game, so I don't I don't think we'll have the armory. But you almost don't want to get that medevac unless unless you're feeling frisky, right? You have to be you have to be ready to zoom it in and try to get a mind drop underneath phoenix which is one of the hardest things that you can do in starcraft just just because you know phoenix if the other guy's paying attention he's going to click graviton beam and lift up your minds as they drop so that's just one of the reasons why protoss players love going for this style they love playing this strategy it's not as good because you don't have the same raw damage and, and kill potential that you would out of a blink stalker build but then again if you go for a blink stalker build and aren't really paying attention to what your opponent is doing, then maybe Gumiho's mind drop absolutely kills you. So the Marines kind of escort the medevac out as it now makes its way towards the main base. And I think he's going to try to time it so that the Marines push the third or the natural right as this drop hits. That has to be the play. Uh, he is approaching that staging ground in front of the natural on Grezvan. So what he's looking to do is get classic, see the alert, and see, oh, it's coming, and not give him time to drop the mines. But as we can see, the Phoenix do get a couple of quick pickups. One mine detonates on a single probe, the other one detonates on a Phoenix. It does kill a probe with it and maims the Phoenix. Meanwhile, the Marines are actually still in the natural, so I don't think that they killed too much 
let's just take a quick peek. Eight total. Okay, I stand corrected. Eight worker kills this game is, is pretty nice. Oh, the mine all blows off again. You guys can tell this was not recorded with the, uh, the super fancy mod that just tells you all of the useful information. So I will, I will now refer back to my primitive commentator tool. Well, first of all, I'm just going to say 36 SCVs to 36 probes. Typically, this is a very difficult position for a Terran to lose. Like, as a Terran, your economy is amazing. You've got to be feeling good right now. Total workers killed, 14. Only a single SCV died in the making of this film. That was the one producing that supply depot right there next to the tank. And look at this. The Adepts are just going to walk right up. Sends the shade away. He's on the tank, so draws a little bit of friendly fire. Almost kills his own tank. That's kind of wild to see. So Gumiho zoning away with the tanks now. He does have the gas and the natural, but he's, he's setting himself up for a standard bio build. The hard part about all of these transitions is that you have a Colossus and Extended Thermal Lance. Both of those upgrades, well, both of those things, rather, are on the way. And Gumiho hasn't even started Stim. There, so there you, there you go. Your Stim is starting at the same time, even a little bit behind Colossus range. So around the time that he can move out of his base, there will be ranged Colossi. And that's going to be tough to deal with. The Raven does drop two auto turrets. Looks like he picked up about five kills. Nathanius, number one observer on planet Earth. If you disagree, then uh, thank you for helping me cope with missing uh, some of those worker kills. Meanwhile, 3rd Command Center is on the way for Gumi Home. And you can't do too much. You can't really do too much before Sten. If you leave your base with everything and it's super slow, you, you do put yourself at risk of getting backstabbed by a prism or something like that. There is an observer on the outside of his base. So Classic, Classic should be able to see. You see Classic's clan tag, Twisted. That's because he's actually sponsored by Twisted T. Shout out to them. I didn't even realize they were in the StarCraft game. White Claw. White Claw never answers my phone calls or my emails or my texts or my DMs. Or when I found that guy's LinkedIn profile and used it to stalk him and get his actual real number and call him, he still didn't reply to me either. Tragic. Tragic, really. And it, so the Observer already knew that he was moving out since obviously it had to die. Um, and the Phoenix, they're in a position where they're just being annoying. Two medevacs are going to load, but as long as Classic keeps kind of poking and checking, there's no easy way for Gumiho to get out on the field with his whole army. So he's he's going to leave most of it back. He's going to send two medevacs around the outside. And then changes his mind and brings everything home. Okay. So he just wants to take the third base. I, th I think he wants to push, but his stim is only finishing right now. Like literally, literally right now. His stim just finished. So... That means Colossi Thermal Lance is done. Might have been done a little bit sooner. Came hard to be 100% sure, but they, they do have the same research time and they were started around the same time. So that's, that's all you really need to know. Three Colossi, three Phoenix, three Sentries, three Zealots, and three Stalkers. Really? Yeah, actually it's three, 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 three. Oh, one, one Phoenix died. Classic, can you please rebuild a phoenix for me? Thank you. Thank you. know what? I just want to say, everybody watching, really... You canceled it? Are you kidding me? I'm never going to be able to trust again. You know how much I'm about to spend in therapy because of that? Oh, my God. Classic. Oh, my goodness. Well, now you guys know why Nathanius has abandonment issues. Charge is on the way. We have a disruptor booting up as well. So, Classic's going to make a transition. He doesn't really need to. His 3-3-3-3-3-3 army, of course, requires him to have three disruptors on top of that. There's going to be three ghosts made by Gumiho now. And he's... Gumiho has traditionally this year been a Terran player that has done a lot of bio versus Protoss, but he's kind of stayed on some of the lower end of the tech, the tech tree. Uh, some Marines did get dropped over here and died horrible, painful deaths. Not a lot of workers have died since the beginning of the game, though, so it's just been a little mild harass. Mild widow mine harassment. Classic does have an obs outside the range of this. Oh, oh, brother, do you still? Be oh, they went around the other way. Okay, I appreciate that. I thought we were about to see those colossi get stuck forever. I thought we were about to watch them get stuck for the, until the end of time. These guys are running slow, but their their cardio is about to kick in. There it is. 
Okay, now, are they going to climb across each other to get up into the main base? You should be able to make zealot chains. Can I just say that, guys? Can I just say that? Is there any reason why zealots shouldn't be able to just, you know, like each one grabs onto the foot of the other and they just kind of, they make like a, a human bridge, you know? Is there really any reason why zealots can't do that? Protoss players want to be able to make a wall building. And the zealot usually has to be the wall. So why not let two zealots literally become a wall? Why, why not have a wall formation that they can form? You need two zealots in a gap, and then they just hold hands, and they let friendly units through, and they don't let anybody else through. Am I really... Are we really, uh, are we really that off base here? That poke on the third base does get shut down after killing a tank. Takes the SCV off of the command center outside that natural as well. And it's been a tough spot for Gumiho because he wants to move out. He clearly wants to get aggressive. We know that he's been largely bio, a little bit lower on the tech side when he plays that bio. He does not like to get ranged liberators. We don't see that a whole lot. We don't see the we don't see the ranged liberators a tremendous amount. We don't really get to see him make that battle cruiser transition unless things get super crazy. It has happened before. But he's one of those guys that is just going to avoid doing that until he's forced to. So even though we know Gumiho is a, is a player that does strange things. And, oh, that observer, does he know? Does he know? Does he know? I don't think he knows. I don't think he knows Classic can see him. He's got full view over his whole entire Ami. He's got, he's got view of his whole Ami. His whole Ami. And then Terran presses the easy vision button. So he knows. He knows. Classic, look at this. He's got six disruptors, three colossi. And two pounds of roast beef to tank for him in the front. Gets a beautiful purification Nova off to initiate the fight. Next Nova's gonna come out. Stalkers blink under the Vikings. And the Colossi are gonna begin to melt the Marines. However, this is a very good concave from Gumiho. Does he have what it takes to push through? Once that mushy front line is gone, there's not a lot of anti-air anymore because of the Stalkers blinking forward. So the just enough Vikings are gonna be able to hang on. The rest of the army is getting loaded up as about 20 Zealots are gonna charge in from the side little flank a rooney action and i'm i'm honestly a little bit torn here the vikings are going to try to land and pick off the disruptors i do love to see this little play from behind we'll then dodge the nova incoming after that and really this is about getting all the bio together in a choke point so that they can stop the zealots that's that's the most important thing right now for gumiho get the marines and the marauders on the high ground shave these guys off and then the disruptors on their own in the middle of the map can't do too much when i say that he gets three vikings that should never have happened but you know what i mean he could kind of chase him down just drop medivacs on him the bio is really fast so just just a disruptor or two is not not really enough but i think if you're gumiho you've got to be feeling good you reset all the tech units you killed all the colossi you killed most killed most of the disruptors there were only there were there were six in the beginning and now there's eight so you kill you, know, you chop off one head of the snake four more pop out we've all seen we've all seen that anime okay hercules is uh is one of my favorite one of my favorite studios out there so three three boots up for gumiho now not really able to maintain too much of an upgrade lead this game. He does have plus two versus plus one armor. So that's why the Zealots have not necessarily been doing all the all the damage that you would hope for. But he is transitioning into a very stalker heavy disruptor ball. Ten disruptors, 21 stalkers. He is just saying, let me fight the bio. Let's just, let's just get it going. Let's just get a good head-to-head -head slugfest happening. And Gumiho's actually building Liberators for the first time in a, in a little while. I I haven't cast too many of his games recently, but I've, I have noticed that, you know, he's he's been one of those guys that doesn't really get that range upgrade very early either for them. And that's kind of what makes Terran busted in this matchup. Range Liberators are so good. Leave some Marauders behind to fight these Stalkers and provide a little exit path for his bio. This is huge. Plus two armor does get canceled. Plus three attack on the Forge is about to get canceled. He's actually focusing down the Disruptors one by one. Lifts up in the very last second. The Stalkers are going to blink underneath. Re-unloads the bio on top of them, however. And without those Disruptors, the Marines and Marauders are actually able to get some very good trades. Huge Zealot Warping to deal with it at the same time. Drop hitting on the bottom left for Metamax, Marines, and Marauders. This is what I was talking about. Very low tech. Very little investment in that furthering of it. But Gumi Miho has just been trying to create a situation where he can throw a couple jabs, throw a couple hooks, and this was maybe the first real opportunity we got to see there. Huge shutdown in the main base. Did not get the plus three cancel, but did stop the plus two attack, which means that he's going to have a two upgrade advantage when his plus three completes. And we should see Gumiho's bio become a lot more efficient, a lot more powerful at dealing with 
especially those zealots. Warp Prism is going to be routed back out of the natural. Sees the fourth base. There's not too much he can really do about it. It is a planetary. And there are ghosts on the field. There are no High Templar. There's no High Templar in the map. There's just three Archons. So he made, he made a couple of Archons. Didn't even research Storm. I don't know that he can push into this. With a couple of Liberators to support, this would be very tricky. The only thing he really... Really wishes he had again is that lib range. Like I was saying, we just don't see Gumiho make very quick plays for that. He likes to focus on keeping a big bio army, and that's what these disruptors are going to be perfect at punishing, as the ghosts do not have stim to run away from those disruptors. He lands a couple of good EMPs, but he needs to get on this army, and there's the big blink into the Liberators. They get shut down very quickly. Gumiho going for a little bit of a base trade action to try and snipe that third. However, I, I, I don't know what he's going to do about the army that is in his base. They're going to try to run up the ramp into two Widow Mines. Those will both detonate onto the Disruptors. The Stalkers actually blink up the ramp into the Marines and the Marauders. And while they do get taken out a little bit, the Archons and the Warp Prism have now been allowed into the main base. And once you've got Zealots warping on your racks, I do not know what you're going to do. Gumiho did kill the third. He's looking for the fourth base. Kept the probe from being able to get away at the same time. Zealots coming out onto his third SCV. Fisticuffs. War Prism is going to be bringing some of the Archons back out to deal with those SCVs, and it's just the Stalkers on top of the production with a handful of Zealots, but that's the hard part about Terran. All these units coming out of the racks one by one. Where can they rally? Where can they go to band together and stave off this push? I'm not sure there's anywhere for them to go, ladies and gentlemen. Coming down on the south side now, a couple more probes running away as he is assaulting the fourth Nexus of Classic and once that's gone, Classic A, his economy is primarily done. So he's thinking about the base trade. He's thinking about the long term. He's thinking about his five-year plan. He doesn't need these ETFs to be worth anything today. He doesn't need them to be worth anything tomorrow. He just needs them to be, you know, let's let's say 30% up in five years. And then then everything is going to be okay. That's, that's what he wants. He's a modest man of modest means and modest ambition. We can't blame him for that. We can't hate him for that. He's got a bunch of racks, not too difficult to rebuild in the corner. He has managed to make his way to the natural and is continuing to try to keep probes from getting out. Um, that said, we know probes got out. There is an excess in the top right. Wow, this turned into a really crazy game. So the Ghost Academy is finally going down. The engineering bay is still there. I'd like to see him just get one turret, but just because you never know if there's a dark shrine in the corner of the map in this kind of situation when you're low on scans. And he just kind of walks by all the probes. Um, but maybe that tells him where the Nexus is. I'm not sure. He's going to dive onto the planetary SCVs, trying to hold on against the Disruptors. The Archons kind of dummy thick, blocking themselves. But I think without the repair, they will all go down. And now it becomes a question of whether Classic is uh, capable of preventing Gumiho from denying him the opportunity to build. I'd really like to see Classic get this Nexus up and crank out a Phoenix. Just get a Phoenix or two. Make sure you have something, some way to give yourself a win if this turns into a draw scenario. Do not let Gumiho get away with this. Do not let Gumiho just float this to the corner, kill all your next eye, and then, I don't know, 360, an Xbox 360 walk out of the room. You know what I'm talking about. You guys are picking up what I'm putting down. So this is very important. Keep our eyes on the Stargate. He's going to ignore it. Of course, he wants to get the Nexus. We all know, we're all very aware that there is another Nexus on the map. There is another! Somehow, the Nexus returned. Now the Cybernetics Core, so kind of cutting the head off the snake is in terms of the, the tech, right? And to be fair, Classic's whole entire army is, uh, well, it's really nothing but just Archons, so... Uh-oh. Kumiho, is that your last building? You just landed it, and now it's on fire. And you don't have any workers, and you don't have any mules, and you don't have any way to fix this. He's going to get himself into a choke point, and then he will get himself blown up. I mean, this game is over, right? That's it. GG. Classic takes a banger of a game. Damn. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Make sure to ring the bell.